and I got to the little piece in Winston Churchill's book about where the, the, the bridge across the Thames is taken down, so, or there's a, not taken down, there was a toll on the bridge to get from one side to the other. And the poor people were complaining that they had to pay the toll every day to get from one side to the other. So the politicians, they scrapped the toll. One month later it was found, and Winston Churchill wrote this, one month later it was found that the, the rents on both sides of the, of the river had gone up by the exact amount of the toll. That was an absolute astound, astounding revelation for me. It, it completely changed my life. I saw, I saw everything in an instant, and it's that, that's then you know, I knew what I had to do after that. So I immediately went down to Prosper, read all the material, <coughs> signed up, and the rest is as they say. Land is generally priced at 20 times earnings, usually. Now that'll go up in good times, comes down a little bit in bad times, but the land price will be 20 times its earnings. If I get elected and the policy's put into practice, what would be the price of land? Zero. Because the earnings are being taxed, the earnings cannot there capitalise into a price. The use value does not get affected, but the price would be zero. It's a concept most people understand when you talk about stocks, but when it comes to land, most people cannot get this concept of a society where land price is zero. Now these days, I don't go about trying to change the world, but the only way I can prove, really, the only way I can show you as investors, essentially for cycles, trends and forecasts, the only way I can show you that we, are, we must get a real estate cycle is because we don't have land taxes. If I let this pen go, which way is it going to fall? Downwards. Absolutely nobody in this room would argue with me about that because it's clear we know the law of gravity. The law of economic rent is to economics what the law of gravity is to science. So if the economic rent, if the earnings of land are not collected through some sort of mechanism, then those earnings are going to capitalise into a price. It's a price people will chase and we will get a real estate cycle. It's as simple as that. It's a concept, it just staggers me, it's a concept so many people outside this room just don't cope with. But I'm okay with that because all of my cycles, trends and forecast readers, that gives you an astounding advantage in the market. It really does. Because you can use it to do all sorts of wonderful things as, as investment goes. What it will do, it gives you a theoretical, well it's more than that, it gives you a structure with which to have a look at the world around you and to judge what's happening and when. The land price is just the capitalised earnings. So land has an earnings, just like wages and capital equipment does. Those earnings are yearly, generally. They will, if left to their own devices, capitalise into a price people would pay because it's just a business. It's the business of land development. And people will, people will pay 20 times the annual earnings to capture those earnings in advance. When years are good, when banks crazily lend to people, they can afford to pay more, the, the price will go up. You can tax those earnings without affecting the use value. And so all you're doing is instead of allowing the earnings to capitalise into a price, if you levy a land tax, you just take those earnings quarterly or yearly as they happen. And so there is no, there's no earnings with which to capitalise into a price. That's the only way I can explain it. Does that help? You read an economic textbook today, they, they don't even, land is not even considered, it's considered a part of capital. 
So me being me, I'll, I have to differentiate it and I have to show it to illustrate to people that if you don't take those earnings, you're going to get a real estate cycle. It's inevitable. That's all I do. It's all I just, all I just try to, to explain to people. Um, nothing else. I think it seems to work. People eventually seem to get it. And perhaps the other thing I'll say about that is that I think there's a misnomer with a lot of people when they first come into this, into this enclave and into this group. The misnomer is that it's socialism, that, it, that the government has to own the land, all that sort of bull, right? It isn't. I think, well, certainly I do, I believe strongly in private ownership of land. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But you socialise the rent. Because it's the rent where the money is. It's not the land itself. It's what it can earn. It's what it can generate. That is where the whole power and control lies. I think you see my point, yes?